This is the six-way smash. This is the 10.3 or the A5 devices in no particular order. The Kobo Ellipsa for you P10 Pro. The books, no Air 2. This is the Plus and the Note Air 2. But I'm just going to treat them as one device. The Remarkable 2 and the Big Me Ink Note and the Super Note A5X. So six amazing devices and I have individual reviews of all of these and I'm going to compare them today. Some notable omissions before we start. There's no Huawei ink tablet in this because I haven't tried it. They haven't sent me one so it's not something that I can compare. There's no Kindle Scribe because it's not out yet and there is no Books Tab 10 Ultra which would be absolutely a fascinating device. Both of those I am going to get to the Kindle Scribe and the Tab 10 Ultra. Okay, so the Books Tab Ultra has arrived since filming this video, and well, I can tell you that it's great. I can also tell you that for pretty much everything in the Note Air 2 Plus line, this is gonna be very similar. However, this is the device that you should buy if you want a more productivity orientated device and the Note Air 2 Plus is probably still the device you should buy if your main focus is for note taking or reading on the device. This might become a little bit of a best of the rest or the first device that goes up against those two devices in a comparison. We will see. As soon as I do get them, I will of course review them and then I will include them in comparisons afterwards. But this is the six way <laughs> smash, we, we called it. It's a fascinating one because this is the first time I've actually asked you for your thoughts. I made a comment um, on my channel community page. I asked you for your thoughts on how I should actually compare these devices. And it's really interesting because I think this might be the best set of criteria that I have done one of these comparisons in. So I'm going to actually compare them on no one of them because that would be an unfair advantage for it to be in screen the whole time. But I'm going to compare them and draw up a comparison table here on the Books Max Lumi. So that should be a little bit of fun because if you want to compare something huge and you want to work huge on an e-ink tablet, it needs to really be the Max Lumi. This A4 size is the one I'd recommend for that. So there are three main categories. There's software, there is hardware, and then there's the thoughts about the company themselves. And each of those I am going to divide up into three individual sections as well. But I'm not gonna tell you what they're called just yet. And then there is going to be a last category, which is kind of, I'm gonna call the subjective category, which is the, I don't know what about a device makes it as good as it is because for some of these devices there's just something subjective which puts them ahead of other devices. So I hope that makes sense, the rules of the game, let's get straight into it. This is six 10.3 inch eNotes ranked, let's get into it. So the first comparison is the Notes app in the software. The Boyu P10 Pro is a really simple experience. It's not much more. In fact, you can't even select and drag or copy and paste. The Big Me Goodie Reader Ink Note, well, it's got color, so there's that in the note-taking app. And I think there's improvements to the note-taking app on the way. The Kobo Ellipsa, although I really enjoy the advanced notebook, there's just something slow and laggy about using that device for notes. The Books Note Air 2 has every feature that you could want in a notebook, but the Remarkable 2 note-taking app is just so simple to use, and that pips it in terms of that note-taking app. The Supernote A5X has a superlative note-taking app and now you can even include links. You've always been able to structure your own table of contents, put star marks. It's just phenomenal. As a pure note-taker with those extra professional features, this Supernote A5X is top in that category. The next app to talk about in the software is the reading app. Now, in fact, most of your time, you will be using either the notes app or the reading app. A lot of the time, I live in the reading app and actually make notes within that. And the reading app on the Remarkable 2 is incredibly basic. Sure, they've added a few things like tags, and sure, you can do web articles, but it's pretty basic. I do like the fact that you can use all of the note-taking tools in the reading app, but that doesn't make it a phenomenal reading app. <laughs> the Supernight A5X, again, for reading is pretty basic, but you can use more formats than you can in the Remarkable 2. So it does pip the Remarkable 2 there. Boyu P10 Pro is actually a solid reading experience. And of course, if you don't particularly like the reading app on the Boyu P10 Pro, you can go ahead and get a different reading app on the Google Store. The Kobo Ellipso reading app, well, as long as you're happy with the Kobo app, <laughs> 
it's really good and of course it should be because it's a Kobo reader, it's a huge company and their reading app is well, it is good, it's solid. Got all those features that you'd expect, annotations, highlights, dictionaries, etc. The Big Me and Goody Reader Ink Note does have almost all of the features of the winner of this category, which is the Note Air 2, but it just isn't quite all of the features of books because Neo Reader, the Note Air 2, is by some distance the best of the note-taking apps. You've got annotations, and you've got scribble, and you've got article mode. There's just so much variation in how you can read and how they adapt to different size of screens in that book's reading app. It's an excellent reading app. The next one is other apps. Most of the time you're going to be spending within the note-taking app or the reading app on any of these devices, but of course, some of them do have other apps which can expand the ability of the device. Remarkable 2 <laughs> doesn't really have any. It's just a distraction-free notebook replacement. For many, that will be a strength. The Kobo Ellipsa, there are a few other things that you can do. For instance, there's a basic browser and there's a few games, but this isn't the place to go if you want an extended portfolio of other apps. Supernote A5X has added the apps that they think their professional will want to use, and they also listen to their audience and they add apps that they know that people are asking for. So there are a few things besides reading and notes for professionals, for instance, calendar and email. The Boy P10 Pro, of course, has Google Play, so it gets the nod for that, but the apps aren't necessarily well optimized for e-ink. The Big Me and Goody Reader, well, this should actually win because the ink note has, of course, the color screen, and that should make it far better for Android apps. But they just haven't got there in terms of the optimization yet. There are some, very good pre-installed other apps though, for instance, Meeting Notes and Translate, and they do work well. But it shouldn't surprise any of you who've seen the comparisons or reviews of the Note Air 2 on my channel recently, because, well, they have got the apps optimized very well for their screen. And I really like the way that when you go into an app, it automatically changes the screen, changes the way the screen refreshes and the way it looks and remembers that app optimization so that when you launch into it, you're already there with the app running as well as it can run on an e-ink screen. It's definitely got the other apps working well there. That concludes the software category. It seems the Note Air 2 is off to an early lead. On to the hardware now and starting with the pen and screen feel. This is an important one for these devices that are trying to replace paper. The P10 Pro is gonna come out last in this. There's no Wacom here, it's fine but that's all. It doesn't have a very refined, there's no kind of frictiony surface. It's okay, but that's all. It's a really hard nib, and it's not a very forgiving surface to write on. The Kobo Ellipsa also is a device without Wacom. Generally, it does feel quality, but again, that's all. It doesn't have that pleasurable writing surface, a little bit of friction to it, a little bit of thought gone into the nib, but really, the pen, there's something lacking there. That would just be solved by going over to a Wacom EMR stylus on both of those devices. The Big Me and Goody Reader Ink Note comes in next. It's a similar kind of feel to the book's Note Air 2. It's a kind of feltish feel, but maybe it doesn't feel quite as zippy. The pen as well is a really good design to have those buttons on the side, but it just doesn't feel quite as pleasurable to use as the uh, book's pens. So it shouldn't surprise you that books will be next. They generally have like felt tip feels and that's kind of okay. It's not my favorite feel, but uh, it's very low latency and generally it's a solid pen and screen feel experience. It certainly wouldn't put you off buying that device. The Remarkable is going to be next. That might surprise some of you. It is a pencil-like feel I find on the Remarkable and I just prefer the Supernote A5X feel, which is a ballpoint pen feel. They have these ceramic nibs on the pens, which is excellent, and it indents, and it feels just like using ballpoint on paper. Definitely one to try out if you haven't tried it yet. So personally, I love and prefer that ballpoint feel, so the Supernote A5X wins it. The Remarkable 2, if you think you prefer writing in pencil on a kind of more scratchy screen, then the Remarkable 2 is excellent. The hardware next, we're gonna talk about the design and the build quality. The Kobo Ellipsa is not sleek. It is very plasticky, it's very large, the case is very chunky. Everything just feels a little bit sub-premium. The Boyu P10 Pro is actually a very old looking design, similar in a way to the Max Lumi that I'm writing on here, which is an oldie, but it's a good design as well. These kind of curved edges and a home button. 
there's nothing wrong with that design but it is a decade old probably now <laughs> the big me and goody reader ink note is a nice design but it's not going to win any awards it's kind of feels like it's imitating remarkable in terms of its look and it isn't quite that sleek design books note air 2 is an absolutely wonderful design i do really enjoy that especially since the plus model and the new cases and the green color i think it's really really good it looks good and it feels tight it now really appeals to me as a professional in terms of the way it looks. The Supernote A5X, I personally love that plastic design. It is a little bit chunky, it is probably a little bit dated now, but it doesn't quite feel as solidly put together as some of the others, and I think it's just probably time for a refresh of that design now. It's very nice though. And it does, out of all of the devices, look most like a notebook. The Remarkable 2 is not my favorite of the designs, but you have to give it to them. This is solidly put together tech really very well designed sleek looking device which is no wonder why it's doing so well in terms of its marketing because it looks the business and why they get compared to apple so often because it looks and feels that really high quality aluminium design it's lovely and lastly features of the design just shouldn't surprise anybody that the remarkable is at the bottom of the list for features it's not just features in terms of the software that remarkable lacks but you know it, it has what it has and it does what it does and it does those things well but it is probably the lowest powered of the devices the lowest storage of the devices it is the lowest featured of the devices the kobo ellipsa has some interesting features it's got a light for instance as well the way it's designed to be able to switch from left to right handed use and the way the case can go together in different configurations depending on left and right handed there are some interesting features there but uh, it's still limited in terms of that. More things are in beta, so maybe they can get more out of the device later. The Supernote A5X does have the right features for the professionals, and I think some of the features, for instance, the slide up bar, the handwriting recognition is very solid on here, making good use of the technology that's in there. It's a good, well-featured device. The Boyu P10 Pro is a good old rounder. It does have good hardware. It's a sort of middle of the road tablet really in terms of its specifications. Boyu P10 Pro also has microphones and speakers and a home button, which are all very nice features to have on the hardware. The Note Air 2 has got microphones and speakers, it's got good quality internals, it's got large storage and fast processors compared to some of the others. It's got lots to love. But the winner in terms of the hardware features is certainly the Big Me Goody Reader Ink Note color screen it's got all the things it's got cameras it's got a fingerprint reader it's got 4g it's all in there in the hardware now on to the company and this is some of the harder ones to actually decide i'm going to start with the customer service this was the hardest one to decide actually by some distance because i haven't actually had to use the customer service for all of these devices and so some of this is gleaned from searching on the internet going through reddit form forums things like that i asked you as well about your experiences on a community post and sometimes there haven't been enough kind of customers of a certain brand to give a true kind of impression of what their customer service is like but i have tried to rank them on this certainly already so apologies to those companies if i've made any kind of assumptions about their customer service so far perhaps they're just getting started in the west and they're getting a slightly lower ranking because there aren't as many good stories and there's more frustrated people currently but this is i think where we're at in understanding their customer service in a Western market at least. So for instance, I don't know if I'm really being fair to Boyu by putting them last here, but I actually can't find any way of getting in contact with them as a customer. So they don't really seem to have Western facing customer support at the minute. In fact, it's hard to even find a website for Boyu. And really you'd be buying through some kind of third parties and wouldn't necessarily have that direct link to the company to ask for help as a customer. The Kobo Ellipsa might surprise you to come up second from last. The only kind of news I can find about the Kobo Ellipsa is people getting frustrated about going through their customer service and struggling to get out of that kind of chatting to a bot and being put in contact with the right person, having someone to actually deal with your complaint. They're a big company, so they should have good customer service, but it does seem from experience out there on the internet that they aren't really living up to that. Remarkable 2 have actually replaced a stylus for me very quickly. And I do hear that for things like that, they're okay. If there's a genuine fault, you'll send them a photo and they'll send out a replacement. 
but anyone who's got any kind of more ongoing difficulties, they don't seem to be very approachable at all. And I've heard and I read a lot of horror stories about their customer service. I don't hear a lot of complaints about books in terms of their customer service, but that might just be because their product and the quality of their product actually seems pretty solid and people don't tend to run into issues as often. But when you do dig deeper into Reddit, you do find out there are some disgruntled people out there, so it's just not topping this category. Big Me have actually made a dedicated team to be contactable by people in the West and they are expanding here in the Western market. It's early days for them. I've kind of given them the benefit of the doubt in some ways here because I think that the early signs are good. They are going to put a lot of energy and a lot of effort into being a friendly and approachable company in the Western market. Supernote, of course, they just really want to be everybody's friend and I've heard really good things about them being really simple and upfront and replacing things. For instance, they had a problem with their covers once and they sent out a replacement without even at being asked by people uh, for all of those, those covers that they sent out. They had issues during COVID about manufacturing and they kept in good contact and that meant people felt very well looked after even though they were waiting a long time for their Devices. They always seem to replace faulty items quickly um, and they always seem to be responding very quickly as well. So I think that Supernote are on top in this category. It's cloud services next. I don't think there actually is a Boyu cloud. I certainly don't think I've signed up for one. Nope, I tell a lie. After filming this, I have found that there is one. I tried to go ahead and sign up for one, but the account system was all in Chinese, so no luck there. But there is Google Play, of course, so you can happily use whichever cloud service you like, which is actually a strength of it. But from Boyu themselves, there doesn't seem to be much in the way of cloud backup. Big Me and Goody Reader Inc. No, I'm not sure there is one up and running yet for the Western market, certainly. Again, there is one. I clearly have made an account with Big Me. I just got my account as a phone number in the device, and it says it's uploading all the notes, but I can't seem to find where they've gone. Uh, there is a app on the phone, but I can't seem to sign into that because I don't seem to have any password. And I can't seem to find a way of doing a password reset. So again, a dead end. Clearly it exists and I bet there is a way to get it actually working. Good signs though, this device actually has 4G. And although I can't vouch for that because I've not tried that in the UK, I in, in any case just use Google Drive, which of course works perfectly well. Also you can cloud share files and that can be done by a QR code or a quick link and that goes up to a publicly downloadable file and uh, that will stay up there for a few days. For the Kobo Ellipsa, the reading side of that cloud service is just absolutely grand, but that's as you'd expect from a massive e-reader company to have all your books synced somewhere in the cloud. But for files, they just use Dropbox and although that's fine, Dropbox is perfectly fine, there's no choice there. So it's fine, but it's nothing special. The Supernote A5X does have an app, it's called the Partner app, and it's fine, but it's just a little bit opaque and sometimes a bit difficult to find exactly what you need on that cloud service. The Note Air 2 does have Push.Books, which is a web app, and that's absolutely fine. It's solid, it's free, importantly, and it's nice that all of your notebooks are backed up automatically and they sync across devices as well. Although why they don't sync the PDF files is a bit of a mystery to me. Maybe there's something about digital rights management there, doesn't sound like books to me, but now they have allowed you to at least sync annotations. So if you have the same file on two devices with the same file name in the same place on the device, then it will automatically link your annotations between those two books. So a little bit of management and you can link your notes on PDFs across different devices. All right, I know that you have to pay for it, um, but now they've made that a lot cheaper. And I think that is reflected in the overall price of the device as well. But what is there in terms of the cloud is good. I really appreciate the Chrome plugin where you can just one click read on Remarkable and it will send that web page to your Remarkable device in a readable format, which is really good. And you can take notes straight on that. The phone app and the desktop app are both solid too. So surprisingly enough, the Remarkable is gonna take the winner for the cloud. <laughs> I wonder how many people leave the video in a rage now. Now the last one is a really important one for some more than but updates is the final category in the company. For the Boyu P10 Pro, the user interface is fine, but it is simple. There are updates. With a little bit of work, they could make this device really excellent. The Big Me and Goody Reader Ink Note needs updates. It just simply needs software development. I'm not sure how quickly they'll come. The device is still kind of leaving its Kickstarter now. Let's hope over time we do see some excellent updates for that. For the Kobo Ellipsa, there doesn't seem to be that much that changes or improves with updates, more like bug fixes, I suppose. It does actually need a bit of a solid overhaul of the way that it runs to allow it, as you'll see in the next category, to be a more flowy device. 
to allow you less interruption in terms of your flow of your fork. For the Remarkable 2, every now and then they do actually pop up with a really well thought through update and that can really change and improve the way people use it. They do seem to be finally listening to what people want and well I think their kind of thoughts when they do change their software is to make it something that definitely works and definitely fulfills a need rather than just add a feature and not necessarily have an elegant solution. That's important. We love the Supernote A5X because they share that update path and they let you know which features are coming but that can be a bit frustrating waiting for a feature that you know you want to use and is a little bit slow in coming but kudos for them for sharing and developing it with their customer base. And the latest update just makes sense, adds things like links into the documents as well, just makes it an even stronger device. The Note Air 2 updates are pretty constant actually. It seems like you notice a bug and you think I will report that and then you see there's an update and it's already been fixed. So it's pretty constant. And what is more is recent updates have made it much more user friendly. And so I really like the update path that we've seen books go on and that they're still going on. So finally, and this is the double weighted, the subjective category. This is the flow category. So I'm gonna put a little times two here and I'm just gonna automatically multiply them by two. The least flowy of all these devices is going to be the Kobo Ellipsa. It's got a really poor stylus to start with and there's lots of people complaining about the lagginess of the Kobo Ellipsa. It's a pity because the actual software has had some really good ideas go into it. The advanced notebook is a really good idea. However, you have to wait after every single line you write. You have to wait and watch a little hourglass as it translates your handwriting into text. It normally does a good job of handwriting into text, but watching that hourglass is really the exact opposite of flow. I really wanted to use it for a set of physics questions that I've been writing and to make the example answers, because of course it also allows you to draw diagrams and it also allows you to do equation editing as well. However, I kind of gave up on it part way through because it was quicker and easier to use the equation editor in Word and I have this pen input pen screen down here which I can draw the diagrams on. It was just not as good an experience as doing it on that. So a little bit of time before hopefully a Kobo Ellipsa 2 comes and absolutely smashes it and gets those features just right. For the Big Me and Goody Reader ink note, you're coming next and that's because although this is a very ambitious device, Ambition just isn't going to be great until it's been executed with elegance. And that's what they need to look for in the next software updates. I really want to see this device developed with an eye on that idea of flow, making it straightforward to use. They can do this, but it's going to take some really intense development on their part. The hardware is in place, but it's just not a flowing device yet. The Boyu P10 Pro, apart from the stylus, which is slow apart from that apart from that everything is easy to use and i did really enjoy having this device in my bag it didn't let me down but what they want to do now i think is look at books and see the way they've optimized other apps for the device and i think that could make it a much stronger and more flowing experience with the books note air 2 and the note air 2 plus they've worked really hard to make this a more user-friendly experience once you find your way of using this device and once you know that it's going to be different to the way that you use on a phone or use an ipad you do find yourself wanting to read wanting to think and wanting to learn with this device as your companion i also feel like since the plus device has come out that i'm really in their target audience i, I really feel a great affinity with <laughs> having redesigned it from that brash blue to the elegant green and the kind of elegant solutions that they come up with, they make me really love using this device. It shouldn't be surprising that the two less is more tablets are gonna be at the top of this. With the Supernote, it does take you a little bit of time to get your head around the way it does what it does, but once you stick with it and you get kind of past that initial learning curve, you will love the way that you use this device. It's gonna be your companion for thinking, for writing, and it's gonna give you a lot of joy. You have to give the flow category to Remarkable. Everything they've done on this device has been done with the user experience in mind. Everything that they add to this device, they wait until they've got an elegant and intuitive way of implementing it. It always comes out top in the kind of ease of use. Yeah, it does what it aims to do. It gets out of your way so that you can concentrate on your thinking. Let's add them up then. So there we go, we have a winner. And the winner is the Note Air 2. 
and not surprisingly it came out recently as the top in my top five e-ink tablets that you can buy right now in 2022. I can't wait to compare these devices to the Kobo Ellipsa and the Books Tab Ultra. So that's coming soon on my channel. Let me know what you thought about this, this new way of comparing. Should I go with this for future comparisons or do you have some other priority that you think should be in there? I know that you often do. <laughs> Things like specifications, not something that I focus in on. Things like battery life, they're all good at that. And so for me, these kind of considerations are things that make me want to choose one device over another. Well done to the Note Air 2 once more. Excellent device. Super Note, well done, second place once again. Remarkable in third place, which is not where it comes out on my other types of comparisons often. And surprising the Kobo Ellipsa, promising ideas but actually comes joint last along with the P10 Pro. Those devices are less expensive than the others. And that doesn't count for nothing in terms of your choice of device. Well done to all of them.